Tampa, Mayor Jane here. Thank you again for tuning in for our daily Facebook. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Today was Chamber of Commerce weather. It was absolutely gorgeous outside. It's too bad we all couldn't be outside. Hopefully some people had the opportunity to, to get outside and enjoy some uh, wonderful Florida fresh air. Absolutely wonderful. So today my guest is going to be Alex Sanchez and we're going to talk all about uh, small businesses and the PPP uh, loans that are available, the significance of that and how imperative it is that uh, we have all of our small businesses applying right away because the first round of funding uh, went away very quickly. So we have to make sure that all of our small businesses are getting the necessary funding that they need. So let's go through a couple of things before we start talking to Alex. As always, our case update, we have 1,062 cases in Hillsborough County. It's positive cases with 21 deaths. That hasn't changed since Friday, which is um, wonderful. In the state of Florida, there's 32,138 total positive cases with 1,088 deaths. So uh, Hillsborough County, as of this morning, and I think they had a little bit uh, of an issue with the phone line. So if you called in and you couldn't get through, just just be patient because it's um, it's there. They have set aside some of the CARES funding, $15 million to be exact, to help out uh, just like our um, One Tampa uh, program. They've uh, uh, put together a, a program to assist citizens with their mortgage payments and utility payments, rent payment, mortgage rent, whichever it is. So I'm sure that they were overloaded with calls today. Same, same way we were when we first started ours. So just be patient and, um, and we'll be able to, to get through there, I have no doubt. So if you are a resident of Tampa, Plant City, Temple Terrace or unincorporated Hillsborough, it means anybody living in Hillsborough County, uh, you should call 813-274-6710. And that's if you have lost your job or had your pay um, decreased because of COVID-19. So there are stipulations there. You're gonna have to show that uh, you've lost your job or you have um, had some type of a, a reduction in uh, wages resulting uh, from COVID-19. So again, that's 813-274-6710. Please be patient. I'm sure the lines were overwhelmed, but um, they've got uh, uh, the funding to take care of, of our city. So very, very important. Uh, also, the need for medical supplies. The county is again asking that um, if you have medical supplies to donate, please do so. And that means anything from latex gloves, uh, masks, whether they're surgical or homemade facial coverings uh, out of cloth, whatever it is that, that you may be able to donate, face shields, anything that you may have, they are taking those at uh, 250 uh, North West Shore, and that's West Shore Plaza on the corner of Kennedy and West Shore, and it's at the old Sears uh, location there. They've, they've um, provided that to take in donations. And it is open from nine to three, Monday through Friday. So if you have anything that you can donate, please do so. So far donations received include more than 60,000 pairs of gloves, 10,000 surgical masks and 2000 face shields. So very, very important. We're opening up the testing throughout the county and so we, we really need some more uh, supplies if you have those. And thank you to those who have already donated. Really appreciate it. R1 Tampa, just to give you an update, we are actually <clears throat> making the payments on uh, uh, those residential uh, applicants that we had. It, you know, it's, sometimes it's, it's uh, difficult. People don't know if they live in the city or if they live in the county. And a lot of times individuals who live in the county actually have a Tampa address. And so we had over a thousand applicants that actually lived in the county. So we have sent all of those applications over to the county so that they can assist uh, those residents. And then we are in the process 
of actually sending out <clears throat> those rent and mortgage payments and taking care of the uh, utility payments as well. As far as the small businesses, we're currently going through all of those applications and hopefully those payments will be uh, going out soon as well, just in the process of finalizing all of those. So <clears throat> thank you to our community for your patience and thank you, thank you, thank you to the uh, city staff that put that program together and thank you to the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay because their 211 number, they allowed uh, us to utilize that as a receiving point for, um, for our One Tampa. So we have a great partnership with the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay and we appreciate all that they're doing for our community. Now on the uh, hashtag face the facts Tampa, remember you gotta send in pictures of your face covering when you're out in public. And I just wanna thank again, our partners uh, that include public, CVS, uh, Tampa General Hospital, uh, Target, Walmart, Sam's Clubs, Home Depot, Winn-Dixie, Moffitt Cancer Center, Advent Health, Tampa Electric, and Tico uh, People's Gas, and Walgreens, and Tampa International Airport. So we hope to get more community partners in that. And what it is is uh, organizations that are requiring their personnel to wear face coverings whenever they're in contact with others. They're also encouraging all of their customers and all visitors to their locations to wear face coverings as well. And remember, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. If you're, you have to run into Home Depot for something, um, you know, you, you're providing an essential task and you need to go in and get something, you can even pull your t-shirt up over your face. Something that is going to protect or, or stop those particulates from um, going out into the air. So that's very important. The two steps, simple steps that really uh, stop the spread of COVID-19 are social distancing and wearing of facial covering. So it's critically important. So please, please, please really appreciate uh, everybody that's doing that. And um, Today we had EPG meeting at 1.30 and we had a great presentation by Dr. Holt from the health department and um, uh, USF Medical School uh, Dean, Dr. Lockwood. And they provided a report on basically how we were gonna move forward to opening up our community. What steps need to be taken before we can start thinking about uh, opening the community back up. First and foremost was the testing. We need to test 2,250 people on average every single day. Now the criteria is gone. If you want to go and get tested for COVID-19, all you have to do is go through to one of the drive-through locations or to your private provider. There's no cost. You don't have to pay for it. It's free. You call 813-272-5900, 272-5900. Give them your information and they will give you an appointment uh, to show up. You can go to Raymond James Stadium. You can go to Lee Davis Center in the city of Tampa. You can go to Adventure Island. Advent Health is doing tests there. And there's a uh, testing location in Plant City. And there's another one in Ruskin. So there are testing sites all around. Please, please, please go and be tested because we have to have an idea of where these positive cases are before we can make some, some uh, decisions. They have to be founded in the data. And as I said, we've done a great job of, of, um, of really not just, uh, uh, we've crushed the curve. I mean, we really have with, are safer at home and, and the, uh, the personal responsibility that everyone has taken upon themselves, we've done a great job with really lowering that curve, but crushing it in, in my opinion. However, that is based on 1% of the population because that's all we've tested. So please go out and be tested. There are a lot of individuals that are asymptomatic I uh, read an article today that in New York City, they believe that 20% of the population is asymptomatic. 
and those estimates can go all the way up to 50%. So very important that individuals are getting tested. It's simple. They stick a swab in your nose or uh, in your, your mouth, down by your throat. Um, the Advent at Adventure Island, Advent Health, uh, you spit in a cup. So there's different kinds of tests that you can take at different locations, but the bottom line is you need to go and be tested. The next one, the next step is contact uh, tracing. And that means that if I go and I get tested and I'm positive, they want to go out and get in touch with everybody that I've come in contact with. And that is incredibly important. And it's um, personnel intensive, you can imagine that. So they're looking at getting uh, 200 individuals from USF that they can train, that can do this contact tracing out in our community. The next one is syndromic surveillance. And that's at, uh, on two levels, at the hospitals, who's presenting themselves, um, you know, where are these cases coming from so that we can surveil and find out where the hotspots are. So we're looking at medical facilities, but also looking at the survey. I just went on and filled it out uh, over the weekend. Go to Hillsborough County's website, and there's a simple survey on there that you can go on and fill out. And then that provides a map to uh, the health professionals, and they can see where these cases are at, individuals that may have uh, symptoms of the, of the uh, disease. So first and foremost, testing, second, contact uh, tracing, third, syndromic surveillance, and then the um, antibody testing as well. That goes into the same category with the testing, but we haven't been able to secure those yet. Hopefully we will. Those will be used to test a lot of the health professionals and the essential uh, workers to see if they actually have had this already, we're unaware they had it, and now they have an immunity so they can go back out into the, the workforce safely. So then the next um, level is the density and the risk assessments. Clearly, the more densely populated an area is, the quicker this virus is gonna spread. And so with all of those others, with the testing, contact tracing, um, syndromic surveillance, we can look at where these cases, these, these um, groups of cases are springing up and we'll be able to get resources in there immediately. So those steps are critically important if we're gonna look at opening our community back up and everybody, everybody wants to be able to open our community back up, but we have to do it in a very thoughtful manner or we're gonna end up behind where we, we started. So. Uh, that's incredibly important. And trust me, I get I get so many emails every single day from individuals, the vast majority saying, we just need to open up uh, our community. And really that's the last thing that we need to do is to just turn on the switch and, and have no process in place to ensure that the cases uh, don't just explode in our backyard. So very, very important. And speaking of very important, the dance party. Every night at six o'clock, our relationship uh, partnership with iHeartRadio and their stations, 93.3 FLZ, Mix 100.7, 95.7 The Beat, Roomba 106.5, 98 Rock, and US 103.5. I don't know what our song of the day is, but we'll find out what that is. You can go on and vote for uh, the song of the day. So please go out and dance. It's so cute to see these videos and these photographs. And it's just a time for a little levity, you know, to just release the stress. And you may have been inside all day with the kids, take them outside and just dance like nobody's watching and have a good time. Make sure you send us the pictures at City of Tampa or uh, post them at uh, hashtag happy at home TPA, happy at home TPA. So get out there and dance. Now this is something that is critically important and I hate to admit this, but I have to, I have not filled out my census yet. Everyone, everyone, everyone has got to go on and fill out the census. That's how 
all of the um, funding is uh, appropriated throughout the United States is based on your community's population. You have got to be counted and there's no excuse, none whatsoever. It doesn't matter if you're an immigrant in the country, it, it doesn't matter. If you are living in the city of Tampa or you're living in Hillsborough County, you have got to go on the census, the US census and fill that out. And if you need a, a paper, if you haven't got received that at home, then um, you can go to, I don't know where you can go. You can go, uh, I'm sure to go to our website and I'll have them put it on there to the location that you can go to. If you have a computer, clearly you can just look up the US census and you can fill it out on a smartphone. You can fill it out on a computer. If you have to have a, a paper a system and you haven't received it at your house, I received it at mine, then maybe you can ask a neighbor for it or uh, we'll find some locations that you can get that. But that is critically important. All right, let's go over a couple of more shows that are very um, timely and I think will be very informative for you. Uh, we have partnered, City of Tampa has uh, partnered with USF Health for an Instagram live series called Medical Matters. And that airs every Monday and Wednesday on the City of Tampa's Instagram account, which is at City of Tampa. And it's every Monday and Wednesday at 10 a.m. So make sure that, um, that you go and you look at that, uh, watch it, and it's got all kinds of information. Uh, information on COVID-19 and just incredible uh, information on there. So Wednesday's guest will be psychiatrist Jackie Flood uh, talking about mental health issues. So make sure you go on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Then we have Real Talk on Rona. It's in partnership with Tampa Family Health Centers and the City of Tampa. And that is a webinar series and you can find out more about that on uh, our website as well, or you can email or call Janelle McGregor and everybody knows Jan Janelle McGregor. So that is every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at noon, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon. So um, that is, I don't think I gave you all the address at that. And I don't think we have that. City of Tampa website has it. All right. Okay, I think that's a, my goodness, that was a lot of information, wasn't it, Alex? And then we have, I don't know if you've met, I know your wife Patsy has uh, Dessa, our office dog, Alex and Dessa. Uh, she was, she's in here and um, she like eats everything in the studio. And she was <laughs> over here, we have a little informational board where they put, write all the information so I won't forget things. And uh, she's over there trying to eat that just a minute ago too. So, and that's why we can't have nice things, right, Dessa? As you're chewing things up. She just looks at me with those big brown eyes. <laughs> All right, my special guest today is my friend Alex Sanchez, and he serves as the president and chief executive officer of the Florida Bankers Association. Uh, before joining the FBA, Alex was an attorney at Sinclair Lewis, a Miami-based law firm specializing in business law, consolidated bank, uh, assistant general counsel, and the Florida Department of Commerce general counsel. From 1989 to 1993, he served as the senior corporate attorney for GTE Information Services in Tampa, and he received his BS cum laude from Troy State University woo, in 1981. Good job. That's where I received my uh, mine as well. Actually, my uh, MPA and a JD from the University of Iowa College of Law in 1993. So, and he is a military veteran, having served and the U.S. Air Force for almost five years, receiving an honorable discharge in 1981. Thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. Thank All right. you and much. Alex has been very busy. We are very lucky to have you here today. He said that this is the third inf informational uh, program that he has done today. So Alex, could you um, please briefly explain what the CARES Act passed by Congress and signed into law by the president? Uh, just give us an overview of that. Sure. First of all, Mayor Jane, thank you for having me on. And and I got to tell you, a disclaimer, I will not do as well as Patsy did. <laughs> I think she had like 30,000 viewers on, on your you page. 
Absolutely. Uh, you, you and her did a great job informing students and, yes. and the needs of our uh, uh, of that very important sector of education. So yeah. thank you for the leadership you're providing, uh, Tampa. You, you have been a very visible and very accessible mayor uh, and chief executive. And really, that means a lot to the citizens okay. of Tampa. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank, thank you. you. My pleasure, uh, that's for sure. You no, know, and I, I, I talk to our bankers all the time in Tampa and they tell me that and they really appreciate that. Uh, you know, uh, this the CARES Act was a bipartisan bill uh, uh, that was passed in Congress on both sides of the aisle, which is really great to see both mm -hmm. political parties come together to to address, you know, the needs and, and of, of small business. They were doing great before the COVID-19 crisis. Yes. Uh, and, and it's not their fault. I mean, all of a sudden we shut down our, our economy and these small business owners, Jane, as you well know, because I know you meet a lot of them all the time, mm -hmm. they've invested their life savings in many of these businesses. And, you know, they're, they're sitting at home right now wondering what is their future? Mm -hmm. and, and so the CARES Act, uh, which included the Paycheck Protection Program, which was uh, written by our own Senator uh, Marco Rubio, Senator Rubio, uh, and and Senator Scott also helped uh, there. Uh, and again, on, on the Senate side, on the House side, uh, we had strong bipartisan support. It, it was in round one, it was 400 billion plus to help small businesses of less than 500 employees, including independent contractors. Uh, and and it, it, it was uh, unveiled on April 3rd, and that's when the loan applications were were submitted by our FDIC banks onto the Small Business Administration. So, in round one, Florida, uh, it, it started April third, Mayor Jane, and it uh, the funds uh, were depleted by uh, April sixteenth uh, because uh, you know thousands, tens of thousands of small businesses in the country uh, have benefited from this. In Florida, I don't have the Tampa numbers, but in Florida, uh, there were 89,000 small business loans approved for a total amount of $18 billion. And most of these average like $200,000 to yeah. get you to the payroll cost, the rental costs and other associated uh, costs that will be forgiven. Most of it's gonna be forgiven, about 80% of it. So that's why small businesses should apply and apply now. Uh, now we're in round two uh, and another $310 billion was appropriated by Congress last week for round two of the CARES Act. So uh, th look, this is important to, to get our small business owners uh, as I drive up and down Dale Mabry, wherever mm -hmm. I may be in the city or county, you look around to your left, to your right, and you see small business yeah. owners there who, uh, again, have poured their life work into that business to, to service us. And we want to see them get to the other side uh, so they can survive this pandemic crisis. Yes, amen. And I, I, I say all the time that the small businesses are the backbone of our, our community. And, uh, you know, we, we work hard every day to, to make sure that they're successful. And I know that so many of them have, have just been devastated. So it really, to me, uh, has been very impressive, the speed with which the government has responded, you know, with the, the loan uh, um, programs and the uniqueness of it, to be able to send it down to the local banks Right. to be able to, to distribute it. So for a first time process, you know, it went, uh, went pretty smooth. So I think that that was, that was very interesting. And we'll get into this second round and the significance of that in, in just a minute. So the SBA PPP lending process, uh, as I said, was set to be handled by banks. And the second process um, with the community banks What's, what's the difference in the first CARES Act and then this one that has just been released? You know, uh, the, the, the second round now, they've reserved the fund uh, into the tens of billions so that uh, our community banks will be able to uh, process those. And, and, and so it's dedicated to our community bank sector, which is, which is good. You know, we need our big banks too. They have a lot of uh, relationships with small businesses. 
Uh, but uh, what Congress felt was that to make sure that our small businesses uh, were, were, who have many relationship with community banks, as they do with big banks, but they wanted the pool to be reserved for our community banks. So in this process, Mayor Jane, uh, really all hands are on deck. Our, mm -hmm. our banks, I can tell you in round one, as round two began today, but in round one, banks were working seven days a week to upload those loans onto the portal because it's really a, a mad, uh, it's a mad dash to the finish line. Uh, we want to selfishly, Mayor Jane, uh, work very hard to keep the monies in Tampa Bay, in Tampa, and in Florida uh, for small businesses here as we compete with California, with Texas, and some of the other larger states. Uh, so, I, 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 which is why it brings me to the importance of what you're doing today, Mayor Jane, that getting the word out. Uh, if there are some small businesses listening in, I urge them tomorrow morning, please go to your local FDIC bank where you have a checking account, a savings account, or maybe a credit history and begin this process immediately. Uh, because as of 1030 this morning, uh, the uploading of new uh, PPP loans began in the nation. And uh, we want to make sure, again, that these money stay here at home yes. to help our communities. You know, I say that selfishly, as does everyone else, every mayor of every other city uh, uh, would, as I know you are, Mayor. But we, we need to keep those monies here. Florida has the 17th largest economy uh, in the world yes. if we were an independent country. So, uh, you know, we've got a lot of people moving into our state, a lot of small businesses. And, and uh, you know, it's, there, there's a large demand here. So I urge all, uh, whether, you know, wherever you are in, in the city of Tampa and Hillsborough County, please apply tomorrow morning, please. Yes, and when the, it's first come, first serve. So That's when correct. the money's gone, the money's gone. So we need to be, you need to be in there. And, and if you have ideas of applying tomorrow morning, make sure you go on, find out what forms are necessary make sure you have those ready you have photographs of everything that you need so that process can be that much quicker and that much uh easier don't wait until you're online or you're calling the bank to start looking for all of your tax information and everything that you need now different banks credit unions you know all the different uh they all have different processes different platforms so how, how do you figure all of that out? How does that work? You, you know, good, great question, uh, Mayor Jane. You know, I, my, relation, my recommendation there is to go to a, a, a you know, a, an FDIC bank where you have a relationship only because of some of the federal banking regulatory laws on the Bank Secrecy Act and anti-money laundering are greatly diminished uh, because the bank will know you and your business uh, because they've had a prior relationship with you. But if you're not satisfied with your particular bank uh, or lender, and then go to a new one. The most important one is point here is just you got to get it done before these funds are, are, are diminished. Mm -hmm. The latest number I just heard this afternoon that $3 billion an hour were being processed into the Small Business Administration since 1030 this morning. So you can do the math. If yeah. there's 310 billion, it's going to go fast. So, yes. uh, you know, just it, it, right at this point, just go to the bank that you've dealt with in the past, or you have a relationship uh, to get it done. There's plenty of choices. Tampa has a strong, strong banking system uh, of banks of all sizes. So uh, that, that is my recommendation, Mayor Jane. Okay, and was it, how much was it? Was it thirty billion that was set aside for the smaller uh, credit unions and and and, and community banks? Okay. Yes, I think uh, I think it's a total of about seventy billion that was set oh, aside. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, so Good. yeah, yeah. You know, you you got to contact uh, as was said wherever you do your banking. That's the best place to start, right there. Right, right. No, wherever that is, whichever lender it is. Obviously, I prefer if you go to an FDIC bank, yeah. uh, but but they're they're really good at doing this and, and uh, they're committed to doing this because again, I'm happy that we were third in the nation in the yeah. amount of loans approved, uh, only behind Texas and California, which wow. is makes sense since we're yeah. third in the nation in population. Yeah, that's wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. 
All right, so what are the uh, underwriting steps taken by the bank in this process? You know, Mayor Jane, great question again. Really none. It's bringing in your your uh, paperwork to show what your salaries were of your small business because the government will help pay the salaries. If you are open for a business uh, before mid-February, you, you qualify. There really, there's no collateral. There's no you know, really strong underwriting. It's basically bringing in the proof of the salaries that you paid your small business employees so we can get that forgiven uh, so that you can pay. The point of this is, is to pay the salaries of your small business employees so they will have the money to keep this economy going until cities and counties and states decide to reopen uh, mm -hmm. when it's safe to do that. So that's that's the other side. That's what the purpose of the CARES Act was meant to do is get small businesses to that other side mm -hmm. uh, so they can come through the tunnel and come out as least hurt as possible uh, so they can continue to, to be a small business. And, and, and so it, it really be sad if, if you qualify for this, if you're small, less than 500 employees uh, and, 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 and you don't apply. It really, it would be, and, and language is not an issue, Mayor Jane, our banks are bilingual. Uh, they'll help you. It's, it's Congress to their credit did a great job. It's a two page application. Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's, that's pretty. I've seen anything in government that was only two pages. <laughs> right, right. So that that's pretty easy. Uh, so it, it, they've really made it as easy as possible to to uh, to apply for one of these paycheck protection program loans. Excellent. So once a bank approves the loans, what are the next steps, and how long would a, a small business anticipate they'd have to wait until they receive that funding? Under the uh, law, Mayor Jane, uh, so uh, and under the process, uh, so the banks upload it. They usually get an approval within 24 to 48 hours from the Small Business Administration. And once the bank gets that approval, they have 10 days to close oh, nice. to transfer the monies to that small business. So, uh, you know, with the thousands, tens of thousands we're doing, uh, we're, we're getting that done. And, and usually it's before that, but and no later than 10 days. So it's Pretty seamless. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty quick. And, you know, while today was the kickoff for round two, uh, the SBA had issues with their system uh, in, in allowing our banks to upload these loans. Uh, I'm hopefully I'm, you know, yeah. keeping my fingers crossed that tomorrow will be a better day uh, so that more loans can be uploaded faster to help these small businesses because they can't wait. They really can't. Uh, you, you and I can talk about it and all that but they need help. They need leaders like you uh, in, in addressing these issues by your podcast here today. This is what people need, this in getting the word out to inform our small businesses. So I commend you once again, Mayor, for doing this. Well, thanks, I appreciate that. Now, um, this starts out as it, it technically is a loan, correct? But correct. if you're able to keep your employees and you're able to show that you've paid your employees, then it turns into a grant. That's correct. That's okay. correct. And most of it will be about 80% will be a grant. Uh, and the loans have been averaging about $200,000. Some mm -hmm. are higher, some are lower, but that's the average. So you can see for a small business uh, located there, uh, you know, uh, anywhere in, in, in the city of Tampa, th this could mean a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, this, this is a, a, a big game changer for them. So mm -hmm. I, again, I urge them to please apply. Yeah, and even if it, it even if it stays as a loan, the um, the interest rate is just negligible, one percent. One percent, and you have uh, uh, an amount of time with which to pay that back as well. That, that's correct. That's correct. So it, it really, uh, it's you know, well, I mean, for a government program, usually there's a lot of hiccups, and there were at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But after it was all said and done in round one, it, it worked out well, which I'm hoping will be the story for round two. Uh, but, I, you know, I just think about I think about as I see this list, Mayor Jane, the 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 18 billion dollars distributed to Florida businesses here in the last few weeks. I mean, that is an amazing number. It is uh, amazing. And, and, and just to give you an idea, Texas had 
28 billion and California had 33 billion. So, um, you know, of course there are bigger states than ours, but uh, you know, uh, proportionally, I think we did very, very well. Good, That's, that is excellent. Now where, what's the website that individuals, what's the government website? I know you just held up the piece of paper and it, it really is um, simplified. If you go online and you look at it, there you go. And right. just go to, it's an easy one, sba.gov. Okay. To, to learn about the Paycheck Protection Program. It, it's very easy on what you need. Uh, you can download the, um, you don't even have to go to the bank. Our banks are open, but you can do it over the internet. Uh, I mean, you can go see your, your banker, of course. We're, we're working, uh, you know, obviously to protect our employees and our customers. Uh, because of the social distances, you know, but we're open for business uh, and have been from, from day one. So there's many ways to do this, uh, but it's very easy. Just download the uh, the forms on SBA.gov, learn about the PPP program, and uh, and, and they made it very easy to to accomplish. They really have. I want to, uh, you know, I've been talking to your your cousin, Congresswoman <laughs> Castor. <laughs> so I wanted to uh, they uh, talk to uh, Clay, her chief of staff, this mm -hmm. weekend, and you know they they wanted to they they've been very involved with us oh, to make very, sure yeah. uh, it, how things are going. Alex, how are things going? Uh, our small businesses applying, and we re really appreciate their uh, their their communications. Yes, I tell you what. Um, you know, Kathy, uh, Congresswoman Kathy Castor has been just incredible through this whole process. You know, calling, we were on a uh, conference call with her on Friday. She walked us through this entire program, uh, walked us through the first CARES Act, uh, as has been Senator Scott and even uh, Marco Rubio called to discuss. So they've had a, you know, a lot of interaction and everybody wants to get our businesses the relief that they need. So we need you to apply. Spanish, we have plenty of, of translations, right. uh, all of the documentations in Spanish and English. Uh, you have to go and apply. And if the bank that you do business with somehow is not participating, then go to another bank. You know, all of the big banks are doing it and they've been through the process enough that they'll know how to streamline it. Go to the website, get all the documentation that you need, have it in front of you, take the photographs, whatever it is that you need to do, right. and get this done as quickly as possible. This is an incredible, incredible opportunity yes. for individuals, small businesses that have just been devastated. No That's right. That's well, correct. Thank you, Alex. Really appreciate it. Um, this was incredibly informative, and thanks for all you're doing to help. Oh, thank students. you, Mayor Jane. And on, on a lighter note, I got to tell you, thank you for uh, treating uh, uh, our newest resident in Tampa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I saw yeah. your letter. It was on ESPN this morning yeah. uh, to, to Mr. Brady, and, uh, yeah. and and I know you you've been such a great sport with that, and uh, it. it uh, I think the Buccaneers are going to make it to the Super Bowl. That's my prediction. Me too. That's what I said. First team in, in their own backyard, the Super Bowl in their own backyard. And I said, I told uh, some of the media, I said, you know, it's it's almost like the media listens to me as much as my kids do, because this was huh. way back in the beginning of April. Apparently, he Tom had gone for a run, and he was just stretching out in a park. Right. A park employee happened to say, you know, sir, the parks are closed and everything was fine, she realized it was Tom Brady. So right. she passed that story on. So I had been talking about it for three weeks and all of a sudden everybody's <laughs> like, oh my gosh. So anyway, we appreciate uh, uh, Tom and the Gronk coming to uh, yes. Tampa Bay. Yes. Very, very excited. I think that um, we have plenty of room in the trophy case for the Stanley Cup, the yes. uh, World Series, and the um, Lombardi Trophy. You so got it. We, we can clear enough room for each and every one of those. So that, that's going to be a big economic driver for for Tampa and Tampa Bay come yeah. February of twenty one. Having the Super Bowl that is special, Mayor Jane. Yeah, as you know. it sure is. But we got to get back up on our feet so that we can we can host that Super Bowl and we can show the world that Tampa is the best city in in the nation, without a doubt. All right, before we uh, close up here, 
uh, one of the things I just want to yes. share with, with everyone, um, I was out on Saturday at uh, Feeding Tampa Bay. They, at, they have a uh, feeding at, um, or an event where they provide food to families every Saturday at Hillsborough Community College. First weekend they had it was two weekends ago. And I went out and um, they provided food for a thousand families. Wow. This Saturday, they provided food for over 3,000 families. Wow. Wow. They did a survey, found that 70% of the, the individuals in line uh, receiving this gift had never, ever uh, received anything like that in the past, been in a position where they needed to. And 60% wow. of the people had lost their jobs. Wow. So this, we have been hit hard. Yes. But the one thing about Tampa is that we are strong, we right. are resilient, and right. we will get back up and we will get through this. There's no doubt about that. So thank you very much, thank you. Alex. I thank certainly you. do appreciate it. And everybody remember to be calm, right. stay safe, stay kind, but most importantly, stay at home. Thank you guys very, you. very much. And we will talk to you later. Take care. Thank Alex. you, Mary Jane. Thank you. Great right. being with you. Great being with you. Yes. Thank you.